So I kind of did something yesterday. Um, I altered the final look of what the setup is gonna look like. After I was done filming yesterday, I went back in the garage and I started messing around with the monitor layout because I just wasn't happy with it. And you guys know when I'm not happy with something, I kind of mess around with it until I get it to a point where I'm happy. So I'm still getting the flat mount to push the old tried against the headboard, but I'm not happy with the bottom monitor. It looks, it looks so out of place because of the size. I mean, don't get me wrong guys, it's a nice monitor. 360 hertz, it's nice, but in what scenario, in what world am I gonna take advantage of that much refresh rate? I don't play Valorant, I don't play CSGO, I don't play the super light game, so I'm not gonna get those frame rates no matter what GPU I'm gonna use. So it just didn't make sense settling with a smaller monitor. It was a 25 inch monitor in 1080p just to get that 360 hertz refresh rate. It just, it didn't make sense to me. So I went on Amazon yesterday and I ordered a new monitor. <laughs> So I'm getting a slightly lower fresh rate, 240 hertz, but I'm getting a bigger monitor, 27 inch, and a higher resolution, so 1440p, which in my opinion makes the most sense with this ultimate dream setup. The games are gonna look a lot better on there. I get to see enemies more in a distance if I'm playing Warzone, and I can take advantage of the 240 hertz of fresh rate. And the monitor is gonna be bigger too. It's gonna fit nicely along the other bigger monitors. So anyways, the order of that's gonna be here in the next few days. So this was fast, guys. I literally ordered this yesterday and it arrived today. The low profile mount for the Ultra Ride. We'll take this to the garage and set it up just so we can see what the monitors are gonna look like. But I also wanna check this out. This arrived today as well. The Govi Glide Hexa light panels. So this is basically like the better version of the Colo lights that we always see. But the only difference here is the lighting is a lot better. The software is a lot better and you get a bunch more hexagon panels to work with and you can mount them against the wall as well. So definitely wanna check this out and see if there's any space to put them in my setup. Oh wow, these are actually a lot bigger than I expected. I was thinking about the smaller hexagon panels. These are actually, these are actually a pretty good size. So here is a single hexagon panel. Looks very similar to the Nanoleaf hexagon panels, but these are a little smaller, it seems. And the back is actually how you're gonna be connecting the panels together. We have five output connectors, and then we have one input, which is indicated by the triangle. So to connect these, you'd have to start from the triangle and connect the control panel connector from the bottom. You basically just slide it in, it clicks in place and you're good to go. And then from here, you can add any additional hexagon panels on the available five slots using this really cool flexible strip. This is actually really cool. You can do some really nice like corner designs or ceiling designs because they're flexible. So you don't have to actually stick them against a two dimensional wall. You can go towards the ceiling or to the adjacent wall on the side. Basically, you have a lot of creativity here. So let's say I wanna add a panel over here on the left side. So I'm gonna go with number two. I face the connector upside down slide it in and I'm pretty much done here. I can go ahead and close the cap. And then once I'm ready, I just peel off the top tape and stick it against the surface. Now this strip over here extends to the next panel. Pull out the cap and then I slide it in the triangle. It always has to go in the triangle first. And there you go, these are now connected. You basically rinse and repeat this process until you come up with the design that you want. So setting these panels up were pretty straightforward. I do recommend setting them up on the floor first, that way you can see that each panel is working properly, but also you can kind of see your design that you want before you make it permanent against the wall. These strips are very long, so there will be a gap between each panel. So if that happens, all you have to do is just fold the strip and tuck it underneath each panel. All right, so I hooked up the Govi Glide Hexa panels to the Govi app on my smartphone. And through here, I have complete control over a bunch of really cool lighting effects. And what's awesome about this is that each individual hexagon panel has six different lighting areas. So each side of the hexagon panel pretty much has its very own lighting source. That's why you get these really beautiful diffused lights from one side to the other. So I'll go over a few lighting effects, starting with the uh, natural section. We got ocean, which is really cool blue tones over here. Then we got forest uh, for those walking that greenery, cozy vibe setups. And then we got sunset glow, everyone's favorite rainbow. And then we got the aurora. But yeah, you guys pretty much get the idea here. You can set the brightness. There's a timer option on there. You can even set individual colors for each individual panel. So let's say if I select these on here and I want to put these 
as purple, for example. There you have it. You can even change the brightness of each individual panel. So let's say if I pick the middle one, I want the brightness to be maybe, I don't know, 20%. This gives you a lot more flexibility and kind of coming up with a really cool color scheme for your setup. Now, if you guys want to get really creative, you can go into DIY mode and pretty much create your very own effect on here, which is really awesome. So if you click on progressive, for example, this is the progressive effect and you can select whatever colors you want displayed inside this effect. So let's say I just want to show pink and teal. I'm going to delete all the other colors. Let me hit apply. So now it's only going to be transitioning between those two colors. I can change the direction. I can start from the inside and move outwards. You can position a crosser anywhere you want and that will be the starting point. So let's pick this one over here, confirm, apply. Check that out guys, how cool is that? That's freaking awesome. But yeah, some pretty cool stuff from Govi like usual. I got some really cool ideas on how I can include this in my setup, but I'm gonna hold off till the end once I have everything mounted just so I can have a better idea of how much extra space I have to work with. In the meantime, Look what arrived today, guys. Damn, shipping is really fast from Amazon lately. So my new monitor finally came in just in time too, because we're gonna be working on the headboard today. I gotta keep my voice down because Shayla's asleep and I don't wanna wake her up, otherwise she's gonna be very grumpy. We don't like grumpy Shayla. This is such a better monitor than my previous one. Oh, yes, yes. It's all coming together, baby. It's all coming together. You know what, we don't need any of this. Why am I even taking this out? Hold up. Oh, look at this baby, you guys. Same curvature as the Ultra Ride, so it's gonna look beautiful sitting right underneath. So this is the Samsung C27 G27. It's a 27 inch 1440p 240 hertz monitor. Exactly what I need in my setup right now. Oh, this sticks out way too much now because of the design of the monitor. Unfortunately, that is not what I wanted. Seems like we're going backwards. Yeah, look how much forward the bottom monitor is now. God damn, dude. I might have to go to flatter mounts for the bottom monitor. Oh man, why can't this just be a simple solution? Okay, let's, uh, let's try the other mount. If this doesn't work, I am jumping off a bridge. Okay, <laughs> so far so good. I think, um, I mean, it's not as flat as I would like, but this is a lot better than what I had before. So let's go ahead and tighten this right now and then put the ultra right on top and see where we're at. Still off. <laughs> um, We're still off, but we still have the flat mount, guys. We still have the flat mount, so um, there's still a chance. I don't have to jump off the bridge after all, I think. So this is the mount that came in earlier today, as I showed you guys. Um, we're gonna put this on the ultra ride and just pray to the monitor gods that it's gonna work out. Oh yeah, this is way more low profile than the other one. Look at the difference. We're talking about at least a half an inch, right? I mean, I think that's gonna make the difference over here. But there's only one way to find out, so let's see. Please monitor Jesus. Here we go. Oh yes. Oh, uh. um, I guess because of the angle, there's gonna be a bit of a gap through there, unfortunately. Um, it's fine, I'm okay with that. So here's what it's gonna look like 
in the front. Obviously because both monitors are curved and one of them is at an angle, we're gonna get that unfortunate gap between both of the monitors. If it was a flat monitor on the bottom, then it would have been covered because the ultrawide would kind of just sit over it, kind of like lip, but I'm okay with that. It's not gonna bother me at all. All right, so one monitor successfully mounted. That took me only an hour and a half to measure, drill, and mount the bracket. Uh, obviously, I did my best to try and make it as centered as possible using the laser line, and it came out looking really good. So, the ultra on the top shouldn't take as long, and it's not as difficult since it's a straightforward mount, but the two monitors on the outer sides are gonna be a bit more challenging. Ladies and gentlemen, I finally got both the monitors perfectly centered in the middle down to the millimeter. You guys can be the judge of that based off the uh, vertical laser line. But yeah, I mean, it took some extra time to get it done, but I'd rather spend the extra time and get it perfect instead of, you know, rushing through it and make mistakes. I don't even know when this happened. I'm bleeding on my knuckles for some reason. Well, that's how you know you're putting in some good work. But yeah, guys, as you can tell, it's nighttime. It's like eight, I think nine o'clock. Uh, I'm gonna call it a day. We made some really good progress. I do need some rest because tomorrow we're gonna be mounting both the vertical monitors and the speakers, and then we can finally move the headboard inside the house and mount it against the wall. We're so close, guys. We're so freaking close. But yeah, um, I'll see you guys soon. All right, so I'm back in the garage working on the side monitors, and it's actually a lot harder than I thought. Um, you know, installing one or two monitors is a piece of cake, but when you add three or four monitors, to the mix, it becomes very challenging. You gotta make sure all the measurements and the angles are precise because even if it's off by a few millimeters, it's gonna throw off the entire design or the entire aesthetic that you're achieving. So because the top ultrawide is curved and it's slightly at an angle, you don't get that perfect perpendicular side. So we do have a bit of a gap. Where the left vertical monitor meets the curved monitor on the top, you guys can see kind of a, a gap towards the top. So I'm trying to find um, things around the house that I can kind of put underneath the monitor so it props it up to the same height as the ultrawide just so I can get the right measurements um, behind it before I start drilling stuff inside the headboard. It's like 100 degrees outside right now. I'm sweating as, as, as you guys can tell, there's no AC here in the garage um, and uh, it's, becoming, it's becoming quite the challenge. <laughs> All right, so for the left monitor, I'm actually gonna be using regular screws to hook up the bracket against it. This line over here is actually the outline of where that massive wooden block is gonna be behind the headboard. Since it's gonna be behind the headboard, I'm just gonna basically use it as an exterior stud and mount the left monitor. Now obviously there's nothing currently behind it, but I'm still gonna go ahead and hook this mount up just so everything is hooked up against the headboard and we can bring everything in at once. Now, unfortunately, I can't do the same thing on the other side because uh, the wooden block is actually a lot closer to the monitors because of the spacing of the studs inside my wall. So for this one, unfortunately, the mount's gonna be hooked up just a little bit to the right side. So I'm gonna use the regular hex screws instead. All right. 
right, damn, I'm working up a sweat, you guys. Finally got the monitor mounts hooked up. That one I can't secure fully until it's up against the wall, unfortunately, but this one has been mounted officially, and look at that, guys, no gap. No gap between the monitors. How clean is that? We are off by a millimeter or so on the top, unfortunately. I will make some final adjustments before I hook up the entire headboard against the wall. But yeah, guys, so far, I'm loving it. I'm loving the way it's coming out. You guys can also see that I lowered the top ultra right just a little bit, so the bottom bezel is sitting right behind the top monitor. I did this to minimize the massive gap between both of the monitors, and honestly, I'm loving it. It looks so much better this way. We have just enough space left next to the monitors where we can squeeze in a speaker. Now, because these extend out quite a bit, the monitors won't be blocking off the speakers and I can have both of them kind of facing inwards towards me. I think this is the height I want to go for. Same as my speaker stands. I think I can keep the speaker on the stands and put this on the back here and measure it. Right? I mean, it should work. Oh my god, no way! This is so much easier, look at that! Let's tighten the bottom part. Three inches, a little bit more. All right. So that is five inches. It looks a lot better. It's more in the center, and I still have to rotate the speaker towards me, so the gap between the monitor and the speaker is gonna be much less. Another cool thing about the speaker mount that I completely forgot about is the cable management. So there's a little hole over here that I can pass through the cables and then out the back. Um, obviously it's not big enough to pass through the power cable, but I can pass through the red and black cable. So I'm gonna have to make a cutout in the back of the headboard so that I can pass the cables through it. So I'm gonna use a laser to mark exactly where I'm gonna have to drill. X marks the spot. See if the holes align. Oh yeah, look at that, amazing. All right, so here are the cables that I actually need to run through the headboard right now. Because once this is hooked up, it's gonna be kind of difficult to do. So here's the red and black cable. Oh man, what? why did I have to make the hole so freaking small, dude? This is barely making it in. Okay, well I got those two cables in. I don't think I can fit anything else. We still have a USB cable as well. So let's just pass these through for now. I don't know why I did it this way. This is literally the longest way. I should have just stuck the other end first. All right, so this goes up and then just plugs back, uh, plugs in the back of the speaker. We still have two more cables. We got the power cable and the USB cable. Those are definitely not gonna fit in there, so I'm gonna have to probably drill an extra hole somewhere. Hmm. I honestly don't think I needed that extra hole down there, but oh well. Okay, so this is definitely not straight. Let's make this straight. Okay, now it's straight. All right, so I got both the speaker mounts successfully installed. Running those cables through that tiny hole was so damn difficult, you guys. But we got all four of the monitor mounts also hooked up, ready to go. The only thing left to do today is to drill some holes to pass through the cables for the monitors. So one hole for the left monitor, one more hole for the second monitor on the right, and then one more hole in the middle for both the ultra -ride 
and the bottom monitor. And I think we're pretty much done for today. All right, man, it is 9.30, 8pm. It's officially the longest I have worked on my setup the entire week. It was a long day, but I feel very accomplished. We got a lot of things done today. Um, all the holes are officially drilled inside the headboard. I even drilled an extra hole on the bottom for the bottom monitor because I realized we're gonna be passing through some extra cables like charging cables and the Elgato Stream Deck and all that stuff. So the more holes, the better. I'm gonna cover them up with some rubber grommets anyways that I picked up from Amazon, so it's gonna be fine. But yeah, I'm gonna go take a shower because I smell pretty bad. I've been locked up in this garage the entire day with no AC. You guys can probably smell me through the monitors, but, but yeah, anyways, I'll see you guys very soon. All right, today's the big day. The PC gets mounted on the wall, then we install the headboard. I took this time to prep and move aside all the cables to make sure nothing was sticking out in front of the two pieces of wood and that they are still accessible even after installing the headboard. I needed something tall enough to hold up the PC while I plug in all the cables from the back. Luckily, I had a few ASUS monitor boxes laying around that I can use to support the PC while I get this done. After plugging everything in, I attempted to lift the PC myself and hang it on the bracket attached to the wall. Big mistake, as you can see, the PC weighed at least 50 pounds and I lacked the upper body strength to lift it up myself. This is when my wife decided it would be a great idea to stand on the desk to try and help lift the PC with me. Okay, let's hold on for a second and backtrack a bit. This is the same desk that I mounted against the wall with four triangle brackets, so let's do some math real quick. The desk is 140 pounds. The PC, another 50 pounds. Half of my weight is leaning on the desk, which is about 85 pounds, and then my wife's full body weight, 120 pounds, is literally standing on the desk with no support. That's almost 400 pounds of weight, not including the two monitor boxes, which have monitors inside them. All of this weight is being supported by four triangle brackets. To be clear, this was not my idea, but we had no other choice and this was the only way to get it done. So we both lifted the PC up and after a few adjustments, it was successfully secured against the bracket. Oh my God, you guys, it's mounted. Big red version four is beautifully mounted against the wall. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It feels like I'm still dreaming, to be honest. This was hell of a challenge. I'm glad nothing went wrong. Oh, it looks so good. It looks so good on the top there. The only thing left to do is install the headboard. But before that, actually, I probably should turn it on to make sure it works <laughs> and that all the cables uh, that are plugged inside the motherboard also work and supply power to its appropriate devices. I do have a USB extension that's hanging out on the left side. I'm gonna plug all of my uh, mice in there and just kind of tuck it away behind the PC at the end but yeah guys i mean look at that it looks so beautiful oh god here we go i'm actually afraid i'm actually afraid to hit that power button <sighs> oh my god here we go please if if any of the fittings got loose and it starts leaking i'm so screwed i am so freaking screwed you guys bring a towel just in case you never know what's gonna go on Oh my God. Oh my God. We have no power. Why do we have no power? Why do we have no power? No, please don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Is it not plugged in? Oh my God, it's not plugged in. It's not plugged in. There's still a chance. There's still a chance, you guys. I saw something. No, we lost the signal. Yes, we're back. Oh my God, we're back, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you, PC gods. Thank you so much. Oh my God. You guys, PC's working, no leaks. Oh my God. Oh my God, I don't know what to say, I'm speechless. I'm speechless, we're not done yet. We're not done yet, we gotta hook up the headboard. Let's finish this thing. Let's 
go ahead and tuck away the USB extension as well. I'm gonna keep it on the top here, so in case I do need it later down the line, I can just pull it out and plug stuff in. There you go. Now it's finally time to attach the monitors to its mounts on the headboard. But I wanted to skin the bezels first because I thought it would be easier before mounting them. Well, turns out it's actually easier to skin the bezel after the monitor is mounted because it's more secure and it's a lot easier skinning from top to bottom instead of side to side. I didn't like how the corners turned out, so I cut out an extra 4 inch strip and I wrapped it around the bottom and the top edges of the monitor to clean it up. All right, so now that all monitors are skinned, it's time to hook up the fourth and final ultra-wide monitor. Let's put this aside. Um, let's just hook this up first, and then I'll hook up the cables. Whoa, why is it tilted so much like that? All right. Oh, wow, this one's perfect. The only issue is this one is a little lower than the ultra ride. Don't know how I feel about that. All right, unfortunately, the mount doesn't give me options to adjust the height of the monitor. And I know you guys are gonna think I'm crazy, but this is gonna bother the crap out of me. I can't have the other side perfect and then this side off by a few millimeters while I'm working or gaming. It, I know the fact that it's there, it's gonna bother the crap out of me. So the only other solution is to drill new holes for the mount so I can lift the entire thing up. Luckily, it's gonna be a very simple fix because as you can see, I still have the outline drawn around the mount. So all I gotta do is remove the bolts, lift up the entire stand by a couple centimeters, and then remark the spots I need to drill. So all I gotta do is just basically lift it straight up a couple centimeters and then drill in the new holes. You know, I've also decided to remove the top skin bezel just because it doesn't make any sense compared to the side monitors. Like the bezels over here make the most sense because it's more on the outside. But over here, it doesn't really transition well over the side monitors. The bottom bezel looks fine because the desk is white. Over here, it just sticks out a lot more than it's supposed to. And the whole point of skinning the bezel is so it kind of blends in with the setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the top one as well. Plus you can also see the cuts near the top and it just doesn't look good. So honestly, I think it's better off without it. All right, now that looks a thousand times better. Your eyes aren't drawn to the top white bezel anymore. It kind of blends in a lot better in my opinion. Also, while I'm sitting down, this is kind of how I um, look at all four of the monitors. And when you look closely, you don't really see much of the bottom ultrawide being covered by the bottom monitor. It actually looks very good. Unfortunately, it pains me to say this, you guys, but this is the last episode of the Ultimate Dream Setup Series. It's been a hell of a journey since the beginning, and I thank you guys so much for being a part of this journey. And I hope maybe you can take away something from this entire series. Um, I still have to do a few things to the setup, like you know, fix the right monitor. Uh, the wall is looking very bland. I want to add some nano leaf lines on there, and maybe add some lighting behind the headboard, and just a few other things like bringing up the speakers closer because they look a bit too recessed in the back. But some modifications need to be done to make it perfect for my ultimate dream setup tour coming in September, late September. So, yeah. Um, Man, this is painful to say. I can't believe I had so much fun doing this entire project. 
Um, I still have to do my wife's setup, so there's that. So the entire desk setup series is not over yet, okay? I still have to do the, the wall right behind me. But yeah, anyways guys, I'll drop a link to everything I mentioned or used for my setup down below if you guys wanna check it out. Thank you so much for your support. Make sure you guys are subscribed, notifications on, otherwise there's a good chance you might miss the ultimate desk setup tour next month. But yeah, I'ma head out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.